Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, here with some Toronto Raptors news. A lot of people have been asking us to make this video as we, we sort of pushed it off as we really wanted to figure out who this guy was, do some research before we, we broke him. We had some other videos planned for this weekend and stuff, but here it is and we're breaking down Dante Hall, the Toronto Raptors new signing, the guy they signed to the 10 day contract. And he's a big man, an aggressor, a rebounder, a grinder. So he, people are wondering, does he have the potential to make the roster, to have an impact on this team going forward? So we're going to dive into all that here. And I think it'll be an interesting video as obviously Dante has, like many Raptors signings, he has a really interesting backstory, dealt with some adversity, certainly has been overlooked in his career, another undrafted guy. So who knows, maybe another rags to riches story, overcoming the odds player for the Toronto Raptors. But Dante Hall, he's a guy, he's played for two NBA teams previously. He's played for the Brooklyn Nets, the Detroit Pistons. He's known as sort of a grinded out player. He's 23 years old. He, he gets in the paint. He's a rebounder. He's anywhere between 6'9 and 6'11. I've seen him listed as different things on different websites. I'm going to rock with the Wikipedia 6'10 because that's what I have in front of me here. So Dante Hall, he's definitely a big guy. He's known to be a rebounder, a finisher inside the paint. But before we dive into a specific play style and fit with the roster, he, we want to dive into some of his past because it's, it's a really interesting story, his specific come up, because he dealt with some really serious adversity at a young age. Uh, playing for his junior varsity high school team, his father actually passed away while Dante was on the court. So that's a really tragic start to his basketball career. But he ended up playing, that was in Alabama. He stayed within his home state of Alabama and played university there and played all four years, starting off only averaging two points and four rebounds. Not the craziest of box scores for a certain player, but a guy that really knew his role and got re became really strong at that role over the course of his career and was ranked, I believe, 80, top 80 in his uh, certain class. Didn't get drafted for the in the NBA draft, so... He's been a guy that's been fighting for roster spots around the G League, around these, the you know the G League NBA teams, fringe NBA rosters, and he finally got an opportunity to play with the Detroit Pistons a couple seasons back when Marky Morris went down with injury. So he got a little bit of run there. He showed his ability to sort of score in the paint, finish around the rim. He's a really efficient player uh, in there inside, but. Again, the one hole, like a lot of these big men coming to the league that struggle making rosters, is he doesn't have a jump shot. And that's the really big issue in his entire NBA career. It's not a huge sample size, but he hasn't taken a single three. And uh, he's currently shooting a, a, a woeful 50% from, uh, from the free throw line currently over the course of his two seasons with the Nets and the, the Detroit Pistons. Now, so it, he's a guy that you're bring into your roster to be high energy to be a low post presence to score inside the paint and those are all capabilities that he's certainly able to do and for this toronto raptors roster that could be a, a place of role needed because certainly aaron baines does do some of that stuff but dante hall he's younger he's a bit more athletic he's a bit more mobile obviously doesn't necessarily have the size of aaron baines who's really known for being a lumbering guy in there but He's a big dude by no means. I'm not trying to call him a small guy, but he, he's a player that can muck it up, grind it up. And I see why the Toronto Raptors would want that style of player, at least within their system. Because we sort of look to draft players that are a bit raw, but have high energy, can play on the defensive end. And that's what he's sort of shown to do. And we posted on our Instagram a highlight of him uh, going at Giannis onto the combo in a, in a little fight. We're, uh, I'm not going to show the clip here, and people always ask why we don't show specific clips, and most of the time, it's we, we've tried to show clips however which way in the past, many of the times, and then our videos either get taken down, they get demonetized, or they just get left up. We we It's really unpredictable, so we're trying to figure that stuff out. I know Josh is working on different things, integrating clips in different ways, so hopefully we'll be able to integrate that sort of stuff, but check out our Instagram to see that video of him really going at Giannis and being a presence down low and any guy that has the confidence to stand up to a league MVP, a two-time league MVP and get in his face and show him who's boss, then that's the style of player the Toronto Raptors like to have. So nonetheless, the Toronto Raptors have signed this guy to be on the roster and they, they picked him up and sent him immediately to the G League bubble where he, he has shown certain signs of, of being playing well. He's only played three games down there so far, but 
has put up some interesting numbers. And Dante Hall, I'm just looking at them now, 14 points, uh, shooting 70% from the field. Obviously, he's taken no threes, but the, he's been 100% from the free throw line. So that's a lot better than the 50% he was shooting over the, the course of his NBA career. Again, I think he only played about 50 games in the league. So it's uh, it's nice to see those free throws going in. Is that encouraging for a guy we all like, Riker and I, love to, to say that our big men need to stretch the floor, need to be able to not be a complete liability out there from at least the mid-range. So having a good solid free throw form is essential. It's a essential first step to getting to that level. But he's a player. He's doing those high energy things. And he's showing out in the G League. He's performing well. He's not putting up the ridiculous stats that maybe we saw from Malachi Flynn or Elise Johnson, who I'm going to bring up later in this podcast. But he's a player that certainly could fulfill a role for this team. And I think we'll have... We'll, gain a lot of value, gain a lot of skills, and develop his game playing for the Raptors 905. So if my tone hasn't come clear, I don't think he has a role with the team this season, and that's the big question people had to us in the the DMs and all that is, could this guy really have the potential to fulfill that role that we signed Alex Len to have? Be a backup center, be an insurance big man, and I know we, we call Aaron Baines the insurance pylon, but this would be some deep insurance, and I don't think I'd, I'd trust this guy just yet to really be an insurance player on the actual roster. I think he's a guy that we signed on a 10-day contract. We sent him to the G League immediately because we think he has a lot of promise, a lot of potential. Again, only 23 years old, and he can really come and develop with our young core of players. So that's my take on Dante Hall specifically. Really interesting story. I kind of flew through his his story, his game, but again, it's a small sample size. There's not a lot to cover with his game and it's stuff that's out there, but the questions sort of roll in and people are wondering as we head into the trade deadline, what do we really have in house that we could maybe fill in some holes if we do make some trades or if we don't make some trades, integrate into the roster to improve this team in the second half of the season as we don't know if we're going to play again before the all-star break with Obviously, the COVID-19 issues, we're not sure what's going to really happen if the game against the Pistons or the Celtics is going to go ahead. As of recording, by all, it's at a time now where we should know if that Pistons game is getting canceled or not. So hopefully by the end of this video being recorded, we'll know. But uh, yeah, so that's why I wanted to bring up some guys that are really showing out in the G League. Because Malachi Flynn is a player that... We, we saw put up massive numbers in the G League, get sent down there. But when he's come up to the big club, he's really struggled to get his game going. He's shooting really low percentages from three from the field. And from all the confidence we saw in his game in the, in the preseason and what we've seen obviously in the G League, he's really struggled to really gain that traction in the NBA. So maybe he's a guy we'll look to develop further. And then next season when we don't know what's going to happen with Kyle Lowry, but Fred, I assume everyone assumes he's going to stay and take that lead guard role. Maybe Malachi Flynn can be integrated then. But one player that people have been uh, talking about a lot recently is Elise Johnson. And he's a guy that didn't really ball out, didn't really sh turn a lot of heads in the preseason for this team. But Prior to the preseason when we made the initial signing for him, it was a player Riker and I were pretty high up on. He's a guy that played for the Indiana Pacers for two years. He's a strong athlete. He's shown potential to shoot, and he does a lot of things. But recently, in a massive comeback win against uh, the Westchester Knicks, I believe that's what they're called, the Knicks G League team, he showed out with 36 points, 17 rebounds, 5 assists in 39 minutes, 15 and 19 from the field. So... Obviously, no one wants to overreact to G League performances, as we've seen Malachi Flynn be a superstar down there and struggle in the main league. But Elise Johnson is a guy that he's a bigger wing. He plays a, a position that I think that's more in need for the Toronto Raptors. I don't think we need that many more smaller point guards that we're going to have to play off ball because there's no way Malachi Flynn is going to be taking over the primary ball handling duties when he's out there with Fred Van Vliet or Kyle Lowry or maybe even Terrence Davis at times when he's sort of cooking and rolling. So Elise Johnson, he plays a more necessary position. He's shown his athleticism, his ability to be a defender, to be a, a threat around the, the rim and in terms of driving and finishing. And now Obviously, he only hit one three in this game. That was the, the question with him. Could he be a consistent three-point shooter? There was promise there, but could he be a consistent guy from, from beyond the arc? And 
he's really shown out in the G League this season, and obviously that's sort of topped off with performances like this. I'm just pulling up the stats for, for these guys over the season, and Elise, he's averaging 16 points down there currently, shooting 35% from three, which is pretty respectable, 76% from the free throw line, so... He's a player that I think Raptors fans should have their eyes upon, especially if he's putting up big games like this on a more consistent basis because a guy that can finish like that, that can do those sorts of things, especially with questions about Norman Powell, Kyle Lowry in the offseason being free agents, if we do put that money elsewhere or they decide to leave, the Raptors have made a made a living, made their, their championship roster out of homegrown talent. So Elise Johnson, I think, could be a guy to really keep an eye on for the Toronto Raptors. But another guy that a lot of people brought up, and we've mentioned briefly before we dive into the, the guy I really want to talk about, is Henry Ellenson. And he's a guy averaging 21 points per game. He's been an absolute bucket in the G League. And if we're going to talk big men, I think he's a little bit more NBA ready than Dante Hall, just because even though Dante brings a lot more on the defensive end, the Toronto Raptors are in need of a big man that can score. And the questions, defense sometimes translates, but again, there's only so much you can do when you're playing against NBA top tier talent. And Ellenson, that's the big question mark with him. But offensively, I think his ability to shoot the three, he's shooting about 40% on eight three-point attempts per game for a big man another guy that's 6 10 ish 6 11 ish it's that's such an asset to have out there because chris boucher when he's hot when he's cooking he is great but sometimes that three-point shot falls off the map for certain games and aaron baines he had those he, he baited us when he hit those when he was in phoenix with that three-point barrage he put on a night in night out down there only 35 percent but the highlights i think the aaron baines fan club sort of baited us a little bit with that three-point shot but I digress and Ellison's a guy that could certainly knock down some threes so he's an interesting prospect but I don't know if he gets minutes on this team because I feel like he'd just get eaten up in the pick and roll but I know a lot of people are interested in him so another guy to keep an eye on the same way we're looking at Elise Johnson to develop his uh, his offensive game become more well-rounded to get a potential roster spot Ellison's a guy that just needs to show he's not a liability on the defensive end. He can sort of show out and be a be a player that's not a complete negative when he's out there. So that's a guy to keep an eye on, as I've mentioned. But the final player that I think we don't get that much many DMs about him, we don't get that many comments in the live stream, we don't get that many anything about this guy. But for the Toronto Raptors second round pick, Jalen Harris has had a quiet G League. He's had a quiet training camp. He didn't get that much run in preseason, but this guy has been a bucket and a half and currently in the seven games he's played in the G League 18 points per game and you know people people had question marks about his well-rounded game but he's had two assists and four rebounds and that sort of stuff that's not what's catching my eye 1.1 steals but the thing that's been really impressive about Jalen Harris is this man is shooting 50 percent from the three-point line on six attempts per game 50% is a remarkable number. That's what uh, that's Matt Thomas, prime Matt Thomas, not current Matt Thomas, prime Matt Thomas levels of three-point shooting. And he's not just a spot-up shooter. He's a guy that people said during draft time, during the when we was during the the pre-draft analysis and stuff. This guy is just an all-around scorer. He can get to the rim. He can finish around the hoop, floaters, middies, and all that. And obviously the three-point line. But the fact. You know, the, the G League, it's the G League, it's its own thing, it's different. It's a different level, so you don't want to get carried away too much, but the three-point line is the same distance. The three-point line is the same distance, and if he's shooting 50% on six threes a game, that's a guy that you really have to keep your eye up on, because a guy like Matt Thomas, who's spo supposedly your three-point sniper, is struggling with that, with that scope. You know, that scope isn't really that accurate with Matt Thomas right now. So it's a, it's a player, if Matt Thomas continues to struggle, I know Nick Nurse keeps giving him opportunities, as he should, because over the past, the sample size, Matt Thomas is a career phenomenal three-point shooter, whether it's in Europe, Mr. 99%, or even last season, had some really strong breakout performances. If Matt Thomas does continue to struggle, and Jalen Harris, on the other hand, continues to be a beast in the G League, maybe it's a... A little switcheroo Masai Jerry's got to do and see what happens with Jalen Harris. I think in terms of everyone on that G League roster, from the analysis, the highlights, 
uh, and Nick Stauskas is also a guy that's interesting, but he's supposed to be a three-point shooter as well, but only shooting 35% from the three-point line in 12 games. Obviously, in small sample size, it's tough to really extrapolate on those, but if there's a guy that really intrigues me from this, this G League roster, it's it's a Jalen Harris. And Duan Hernandez is a guy I also didn't really talk about. He's shooting 71% from three, but only, uh, only 0.8 attempts per game. Duan Hernandez is another guy. I think he's just got to get himself not injured. So I'll leave him out, and he's only played a small sample size. But Jalen Harris, he'd be the guy that, looking at the G League and looking at the guys, comparing him to a Dante Hall, to a uh, Henry Ellenson, all those players, he'd be the guy I'd look at. But let me know what you guys think. What are your thoughts on the, the Toronto Raptors sort of G League team, the farm team? Who should we bring up? Who, who do you think has the most potential out of all of these players? Let me know in the comment section below. And as I mentioned, got the, didn't switch back to the intro. Only messed it up, what is it, 15 minutes in. But uh, we're on the road to 20,000 subscribers. So really appreciate everyone telling your friends, getting that uh, getting that going. We Once we started this campaign, everyone was subscribed and everyone was getting on. So uh, now we want to add that back up. We were, we're on that road. So yeah, tell your friends, the Raptors, fun times ahead. You guys are the best for making this far. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. Check out the website, raptorsdigest.ca, for a lot of cool articles. The TikTok, I'm finally getting that launched tonight. So you guys are the best. I'm signing off. Cheers.